Praise God for the message of the song. Indeed, it is our prayer, it is our desire that when God calls us to go with Him, despite the challenges that we will be facing, we will trust Him no matter what. And during the last Sundays, we talked about the distinctives of Kamakop. And this time, I'd like to once again review some of the things that was mentioned and somehow try to explain what's the relevance of these distinctions to the different teachings that we encounter or we face outside the church. The first Sunday of the month, we talked about Christ, our Savior. And this particular teaching or distinctive opposes the view that salvation can be found elsewhere. This teaching reminds us that we only have one Savior and that the only way to salvation is through Jesus Christ, no one else, not even through your effort or strength. The second Sunday, we talked about the sanctifier. This view opposes the idea that holy living is achieved through our own effort, our own strength. We become holy not because of our own effort, but because of the Holy Spirit empowering us. That's why without God, without Christ in our hearts, living in us, we will never be considered holy. We will never be accepted by God. But we are made righteous because He made us righteous through the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit. And you all know that um, last time, when Attorney Luistro talked about this, he fell. Because the empowerment of the, of the Holy Spirit is not really about physical strength. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is willingness to go on. Willingness to fulfill the will of God despite the challenge. And we saw that. Attorney Luistro wanted to finish his sermon, despite what he felt at that time, despite the physical weakness that he was experiencing. And that, I believe, is sanctification. In the Holy Spirit empowering us to do His will, giving us the will to keep on going, to continue. And finally, we talked about Christ, our healer. One of the teachings or one of our distinctives that opposes the view that miracles of healing cease to exist. Alam niyo po, maraming hindi na naniniwala sa miracle of healing, especially today. Some of them don't believe in miracles anymore, especially miracles of healing because of the technology that we have. But we have heard from Doc Sam testimonies of people who have been healed miraculously by God. And that is one of the core teachings of Kamakop, telling us that don't believe those theologians or scholars who are saying that the miracle of healing has already ceased. They call this the sensation. A theological view that believes that miracle only exists in the NT and OT times. 
And finally, we arrive at the last core teaching of Kamakop, one of our distinctives, and that is Christ, our coming King. Christ, our coming King. What is special about Christ, our coming King, aside from He is our King? What is special about it? And later we will know what does the significance or what is the relevance of Christ coming again. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. Indeed, despite the struggles, despite the challenges that we are facing, we are here not because of people, not for any other reasons, but for the only reason that we want to show our love, we want to learn from you, we want to hear from you, and we want to grow in our spiritual life. So, Father, empower us with your Holy Spirit right now and help us to focus to your message, to focus in listening to your word. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. What if one time in your life you wanted to entrust your home you wanted to ask someone to take care of your house while you're gone for a vacation. And then in your return, upon your return, you saw your house in a mess. You saw everything in chaos. What would you feel? Or what if ipinagkatiwala mo yung alaga mong hayop, yung pinakamamahal mong papi to your friend or to your neighbor that you trust and then pagdating mo sa bahay, pag uwi mo, wala na yung pinakamamahal mong papi. What would you feel? What do you think Will God feel if He returns and finds you as you are right now? Will God be happy? Or will He be discouraged with what He will see in you? Ano kaya mangyayari no kung maya maya after the sermon or immediately pagkatapos ng closing prayer biglang dumating ang Panginoon will he find you faithful will he find you true to your calling or baka naman ang madadat na ni Lord is the chaotic person the person who is far from God. A person who makes God his last priority. Will God be excited to see you right now? I'm sure you know the answer to that. And many times, the longer we wait on Him, the longer we wait on His return, we become tired of doing, of following His will. Why? Because at, at times, obeying God, following God, brings a lot of challenges. And being with the Lord is, is a life that is not easy. Why? Because in the best of your ability, you have to follow Him no matter what. Well, God is not expecting us to be perfect. That's not the point. But He wants us to give our best in everything. And sometimes, we grow tired of that. 
Because we are living in this physical body. A body that has a lot of weaknesses. And that is why talking about waiting, the question is, how do we wait on God properly? How do we wait properly? We wait on Him because we believe, firstly, that He will return. We believe that with all of our hearts. I do not know with you, pero I believe that God will return for me and you. And we all know that in the Old Testament, when Jesus was prophesied as the Messiah who will redeem Israel, you know what? The Israelites thought that Jesus will come as a king who will deliver them from political oppression. Unknowingly, that was not really the case. Jesus came to earth not just to rescue them from this temporary problem, which is at the time a, pro a political struggle, but Jesus came because he wants to rescue us from a more pressing concern. And that is what? From eternal damnation. God wants to rescue you and me from sin, from the punishment of sin. Supposed to be tayong lahat sa impyerno mapupunta. But because of Jesus Christ, our Savior, through Him, we were all rescued. And that was the, the real problem at that time. It was not the political struggle. It was the problem of sin. And that's why we need to overcome that struggle. And that's why in the New Testament, Jesus lived a life that is holy so that he can be the best sacrifice that will cleanse us, that will pay all the needed requirement for the penalty of our sins. And so he resurrected and then ascended into heaven, which is why we have this hope right now. Which is why we wait on God. We wait on the Lord. And we believe that with all of our hearts. However, again, from time to time, the more we wait on Him, the more we grow tired. And our attention would eventually shift to, instead of waiting on God's return, our attention shifts to our personal concerns, our life concerns, to the point that Christ now becomes the last priority. And that is why, brothers and sisters, we need to know how to wait on God properly. Now, kindly open with me your Bibles to Matthew 25. I'm sure all of you know about the story of the ten virgins. Okay, we have these ten virgins. The, the first five were the faithful ones, the ones who are ready. And so, despite... Uh, despite the long period of time waiting for the groom, they were prepared and so they were accepted in the banquet. While the other five were the foolish ones who were not prepared. And because of that, they were not accepted in the banquet. They were not able to see the party. Now, I'd like to point out this Two important emphases in this 
particular chapter. Chapter 25, verses 12 to 13. Now, we need to understand that every parable, all these parables, has their own emphasis. Follow, they follow a particular theme. And if you will try to observe and go back to Matthew 24, you will see a recurring theme. A theme that is being emphasized by the author. And what is that? To keep watch. Okay? And not only that, there is the emphasis on the reality of the end of time. That the end of time will surely come. Another emphasis here is about living for God. That's why if you will look at um, if you will look at chapter 25 verse 40 to 41, you will see there Jesus talking about whatever you do for the least of these brothers and sisters, you did it for me. So, these are the recurring theme. And mind you, the context here is about the end times. So now the question is, what is the relationship of these themes to preparation for the coming of Christ? Now, if you will go back to our main passage, which is Matthew 25, you will notice there in verse 13, the verb, therefore, keep watch. Keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Now, we need to understand that when Jesus said keep watch, he has a context in mind. Okay? So when he said keep watch, it could mean that they need to persevere no matter what the challenges are. And you will see a similar, uh, a similar connection to this in Matthew 24, verse 4 to 9. It says there, watch out that no one deceives you. So keep watch here means... Be careful of those people who can deceive you of wrong teachings. Those who will profess that they are the Messiah. Those who will say, I am Christ. And not only that, keep watch here. If you will look at verse 9, means that they need to persevere under trial, under persecution. And then moving forward, if you will look at verses 42 to 43 of chapter 24, it says there again, a recurring theme, therefore keep watch because you do not know on what the day your Lord will come. And then it says there, but understand this. If the owners of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you see, keeping watch here in this context also means that they need to be consistent. They need to be active. It's like 24 hours watching the entire area. Making sure that when the thief will come, they will be ready for it. And similar with our faith in Christ. That we need to be 24-7 active in our relationship with Him. Because we do not know when is he coming back? 
And then later on, about the talents, verse 29, for whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. Now, seeing this, keeping watch could also mean in the context of being faithful to what is entrusted to you. And finally, about the sheep and the goats. This is in the context of caring for others as showing love for God. We see here that keeping watch could also mean in this context, showing our love for God by caring for others, by learning to forgive others, by serving others, even if they are not uh, they are not deserving of that. Which leads me now to my main point, be actively watchful of how and who you live for. Be actively watchful of how and who you live for. Being watchful entails being active. It's like 24-7, you have to keep your eyes open. 24-7, kailangan makita kang nagpa-perform, may ginagawa. Para bang yung experience mo na kung saan yung boss mo laging nakatingin sa'yo. Pag yung boss mo nakabantay sa'yo, I'm sure hindi ka makaka-open ng FB, ng kung ano-ano pa dyan. Tapos papakita mo talaga na may ginagawa ka. Yun po yung ibig sabihin ng be actively watchful of what? Of how you live your life. Hindi ko alam if you have this daily assessment of your life, of, of what you do. But I think kailangan din natin yon from time to time. We need to assess our, uh, how we do things, how we perform, how we act. It has to be in accordance to, to God, to the will of God. And then finally, be, wa be actively watchful of who you live for. Who do you live for? Do you live for yourself or for God? Now, I want to elaborate this, this point and I want to start with the first one. It says here, keeping watch of who you live for by being faithful to your commitment to Him and to what is entrusted to Ah, sorry, sorry. Um, sorry, nagkamali po. The first one, keeping watch of how you live by being consistent and persevering in every moment. Like I said a while ago, if you will look at the context, being watchful here means that you need to be consistent and you need to persevere in every moment. You know what? Um, Billy Graham, when he had this uh, interview, he was asked in the interview the question, what will you do if you know that Christ's return is near? And you know what the answer of Billy Graham? By the way, Billy Graham is a known evangelist. Um, maraming nakikinig sa kanya. Thousands of people listens to his messages. And uh, because of his life, because of his testimony, many are convinced of what he is preaching. 
and because of him, a lot of people came to know the Lord. And so in this interview, you know how he answered the question? This is his answer. He said, I will still do the same things that I do. Now, Billy Graham, he doesn't have to adjust anymore. He doesn't have to change his ways because all the things that he's doing, he's doing it already for God. Sa madaling salita, hindi na kailangan magbago ni Billy Graham because he's already prepared. Now, we're not saying that Billy Graham is perfect just as you and I. We're not perfect. But we make sure from time to time that we try our best to live our lives for God. At times, we commit sin, but we ask for forgiveness. We get back again. We rise up and then move on, move forward. And I think yun po yung ibig sabihin ng consistency and perseverance. Because consistency and perseverance are not a matter of being perfect, but a matter of not giving up and moving forward. And so, brothers and sisters, that's the challenge. We need to be consistent. We need to persevere in doing the will of God. We need to push ourselves to obeying God's will. And then finally, the last point that I want us to look at is keeping watch of who you live for by being faithful to your commitment to Him and to what is entrusted to you. I have questions here that we can we can use to, to ask ourselves for our personal assessment. The first question is this, am I living for God or for myself? Is my time dedicated to God? Or I am too lazy to do anything? Another question, what am I doing with what He has entrusted me? I'm sure God has entrusted you gifts, abilities, Skills. Now the question is, what are you doing with that? Are you using it for Him or again for yourself? And then last question, am I expressing my love for God through loving others? Am I expressing my love for God by loving others. Now, if you will look at this, this part, being watchful here is loving God, prioritizing Him, giving our lives to Him, and spending time with Him. How do we do that? By caring, by loving others. You know what my greatest regret? My greatest regret in life is when I fail to love my Lola the way I should have. When I was young, I was mean to my grandmother. I say bad things to her.
I don't pay attention to what she feels. And you know what? Nung time na na-realize kong mali ako, it was already too late. And many times, nakakalimutan natin yon. Many times, too late na. You have your Nandiyan pa yung mga lola ninyo, yung mga lolo ninyo, your parents, your brothers. It's not yet too late to show your love for God by loving them. Minsan, mas madali sa atin yung respetuhin yung iba. Mahalin yung iba kaysa sa yung ating mga uh, kapamilya. And here, we are reminded that maintaining your relationship with God involves loving the people around you. You cannot say you love God if you cannot fix your relationship with your friend, with your brother, with your parents. Now let me end with this question. Why is he a king worth waiting for? Why is he a king worth waiting for? Now let me give you the answers to that. First one, because he gave his life to save you from the penalty of sin. He is worth waiting for because He rescued you. And you have to remember that. Baka nakakalimutan mo na yan. And second, Christ, our King, is worth waiting for because He walks with us every day. He walks with us and empowers us to overcome sin. That's why we say He is our sanctifier. You are not alone. You have to understand that. In your battle with sin, you're not alone. You're not on your own. God walks with you every day. Because He's the only person who can enable you, who can empower you, to overcome sin. And then He is worth waiting for because He is your healer in, in both physical and spiritual sickness. And finally, you know what? He is worth waiting for because He will come back for you and me, no matter what the circumstances are. So hold on and wait by being watchful on how and who you live for. So brothers and sisters, as we end this Kamak of Emphasis Month. I hope yung mga distinctions na yon, those core teachings, would remind us of how we view our God, of how we practice our faith. And it is my prayer that as we are being reminded, we will not go out there 
you know, bringing the logo, the alliance name. But we will go out there bringing the life of Christ in us and through us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for reminding us of your word. Indeed, Lord, these core teachings is from your word, the Bible, the scripture. This is not from Kamakop. And that is why, Lord, as we go out there, I pray that people will see you in us. And I pray, Lord God, that as we wait for you, we will be ready all the time. So, Father, I pray that you will minister to each one of us and to those who are not sure yet of their faith, I pray that you will open their hearts and their minds, that you will speak to them, that you will remind them. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.